Okay, let's look at Canva so that I can show you guys what you need to do to edit the Canva templates and make them your own for your family history book. So when you purchase pages from Genealogy is Boring, uh, you're going to get a PDF that looks like this. And there are these links on here. These are the links that are going to take you directly to Canva so that you can edit the um, templates. So let's do, uh, which one should we do? Let's do a visual timeline. Okay. I'll just shut these other ones because it's kind of confusing. So it's going to say a template created by Carly Lane Morgan was shared with you. Start designing now. Um, mine says I can edit the template because I'm I'm in my own Canva account, um, but yours is just going to have this button down here that says use template for new design. So go ahead and click that and it's going to open the uh, template right in Canva. And now you're ready to edit it. So if we zoom in a little bit, you can see um, there is a, there's a photo circle. There's some text, uh, there's text here, there's an index number down at the bottom. Uh, in order to edit all of these, all you have to do is basically click on something and then yeah, you can type whatever you want. And if you notice, uh, this, this sort of went to the next line as soon as it hit the end of this box, but you can grab this box right here and you can make that longer if you'd like, if you'd like to have a lot of text that goes down right here. You can put a date up here, let's put today's date, 16 March, 2024, Ooh, we did it again. We definitely want that to be longer. So I'm just gonna pull that over. And now I've added this little timeline event. And this photo here, I'm going to go over here to uploads and I've got a lot of photos uploaded. Let me grab, uh, you can see a lot of the photos that I've been using to make genealogy is boring are up here, but let me grab a photo of me since that's what we're, there's some old photos there. That's what I should go down to my old photos folder. It's better. Um, but you can see it, it populated the photo right in that circle. If I needed to, I could use these uh, little circular arrows to turn the photo, or I could double click on it and it's gonna open up a ghost photo around that frame and I can make the photo bigger. But when I click outside of that ghost photo, you can see that it's still stuck inside that frame. Um, which is nice because then it organizes it nicely on my timeline and I can add different photos and just double click on them and adjust those little ghost photos and uh, add things to my timeline like that. And then I can, of course, just go through and click on this text and update it so that it looks the way I want it to. Now down here for the index number, if I click on this, I can put like a, let's say I put an 11, but if you'll notice, see it, it's not underlined. There's a line here and this just made the line longer. Now I can select the 11, go up here and underline it using this button. Or if you don't want that to be longer, I'm going to hit this undo button. See this up here? I'm gonna undo the underlining and I'm gonna undo the 11. And that's just gonna go back to the way that the index number looked originally. I can actually grab some of this text. I'm gonna copy it, paste it, move it away. And let's say I just want it to be 11. Type 11 there. And then I can just grab that and move that down. And if you're zoomed out like this, it's going to try to like snap it into place to line it up with other things. But you can use this zoom tool right down here at the bottom, the slider bar. And that's going to um, zoom way in. And the more you're zoomed in, the more control you're going to have over where exactly these elements end up. And so I can just move the 11 to where I need it to be. And you can see when you're zoomed in, you can also very easily move the circles around if you need to, um, you know, just if you ever have something that you think needs to be adjusted. So that's how you edit the page um, to make it look the way that I set the page up. Now you can edit larger things about the page. You can change the colors. Um, if I wanted this font to be blue, I could go up, I could select it and then go up here to the text color and I can uh, make the font blue. Um, I can change all of the font to blue. It's going to ask me, do you want to change all the black font to blue? Sure, I'll change that. And now all of the font on the page is blue. I can even grab this color bar. This is where um, the book is going to be bound. And let's say I wanted to make that a different color of blue. Let's do um, a light blue. And now I've made the page look uh, different. Maybe I want all of the pages to be a blue text with this color blue in the middle. And I would just change um, all of the pages that I use so that they look like that. Now. Even though I've changed this on this timeline, um, if we go back to that 
PDF, let's say that I wanted to make another visual timeline. All I have to do is click on this link. It's going to open up a fresh window, a fresh tab here. Uh, I can use the template for new design and it's just reset it back to the way that I have it set up. So there's nothing that you can do that's going to mess up the timeline, you know? Um, and if you ever do mess something up when you're working on it, you can just use this little backwards arrow button and that's going to undo something. Now you will notice if you scroll down, there's this other copy of the timeline. That's because if you're printing these pages out, this is the page that would go on the left side of the book if you had it open in front of you, because this title goes on the outside of the page and this part goes in the gutter of the book. That's where the book is bound. So depending on how you want your book to be laid out, you might want this page or you might want that page. You could put these pages together in a spread and have a longer timeline. Um, but if you are only wanting one page at a time, you can either let me move me down. When you hit share, you can either choose to download and say, instead of wanting all pages that you only want to download page one, and you can download it either as a picture, which you can then drag into like a bookmaking app like Blurb, or you can download it as a PDF um, and then have a PDF page that you can use to build a book. Uh, if you don't want to worry about making sure that you only selected the one page, you can also go down here and delete this page. Because again, every time you click this link, you're going to get a brand new, oh, sorry, my Zoom is in my way. You're going to get a brand new um, timeline. So you cannot mess this up now that you've bought um, now that you've bought the templates, you get to just have fresh templates whenever you need them and you can use them over and over and over again. Now you can get more creative and add additional things to these pages. If you go to elements in Canva, um, there are shapes, graphics, stickers, uh, charts, tables, frames. You can add any of this stuff to these pages. All you have to do is just drag and drop like this. Let's say I wanted to add a little heart right here. It's a heart photo frame. Everything that's that sky with the green bottom is a, a photo frame. And then I could go over to my um, photo folders and I could drag a photo in, adjust it. And now I've added a little heart photo. So the pages are completely customizable um, so that you can make them look the way that you want them to. That's the fun thing about Canva. But again, if you just want to go back to basics, um, you can always just come back to the, the PDF that you've purchased and click those links. And it's going to take you to that um, clean looking standard page where all of the font matches and things like that. I do suggest that if you decide to change the color and the fonts, you know, let's say you wanted to have this be um, a, a fancy font like that, which by the way, when you go into the Canva font, some of them are going to have these little crowns. That means that you have to have a Canva Pro account, which I do. You may be able to still see those fonts if you don't have a Canva Pro account, but it won't let you download the page and save it without upgrading. So if you don't have one, then you might just want to stick to a free font. Um, Beth Ellen is another one that I've used sometimes. Now, let's say you wanted all of your pages to be in this cursive. I wouldn't recommend it, side note, because actually a horrifying number of people can't read cursive. Um, but at the same time, I think that cursive look, looks nice occasionally. I'm actually going to change this to cursive. Uh, let's change that to Beth Ellen. And let's say you wanted all of this timeline to be cursive. Um, I would suggest that you write down the colors and the fonts that you choose so that you can keep using those um, throughout your book. Because with design details, you kind of want to pick something and then stick to it. That's going to be the easiest way for your reader to be able to enjoy the book and follow it and feel like it's a cohesive thing. So um, again, you can stick with my designs and just go with, let's see this one. Again, um, you can see this is back to, let's do another one. So you can see with these different pages that the the general colors and the text and everything match. Now, all of this is editable. See, I can make this map whatever color I want it to be. But if you just want to go with um, the colors that I picked, that is one way to make sure that your book matches. But again, if you want everything to be purple, I think that that's a wonderful choice. I just want you to stick with it so that um, your book looks cohesive and you don't have crazy fonts and crazy colors on every single page because that'll make it look a little bit manic. You could do a different color for each ancestor chapter or something like that, um, but just try to make those 
those decisions ahead of time so that you aren't in Canva just clicking around because there are some really, really fun things that you can do in Canva. Um, let's see. Well, I won't do anything now. You can make them, you can make things look sparkly and rainbow and all sorts of stuff. But anyways, we don't need to worry about that right now. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know to be able to use these these template links and just hang on to this PDF because uh, these are the links that you're going to be using over and over again to build your family history book.